All right, guys, first I gotta block my cloud here. Otherwise, it's gonna sink. Okay, so you import a logo or something like this, and we wanna learn how to get the background transparent because maybe we wanna put in a wood grain. Let's see, we'll make this the background. And then we bring in this JPEG. So one of the ways you can tell these you're a JPEG and not vector. So if you're lucky, you, you'll get a customer that brings in a vector image. As you can actually select the whatever it is you, you, you have and just move it. And you see that's a solid square. When this is a vector, it won't be a solid square. So this is known as a photo or a this, this particular one's a JPEG. So the best way I have learned to actually do this on Corel Draw, first of all, when we're scrolling in, you can see this is very low quality. If you zoom in using the wheel on your mouse, uh, I'm 1600%. So this is a really low quality graphic. I would almost ask for a better one, but in the sake of this video, I'm gonna show you how to move forward anyways. So let's go ahead and select this. And I move up here to um, bitmaps and then click convert to bitmap. I like to set it at 100 dots per inch. Sometimes it needs to be more, sometimes it needs to be less. And now this is a 100 dot per inch bitmap. It was, came in as a JPEG. I don't know how many dots per inch it was, so I like to make sure I know how many dots per inch it was. And we go to trace, outline trace, line art. Then we'll go, uh, you always have to unselect, delete original, reselect it in this Corel Draw. And you see with this being low quality, we lost some details here. This is probably not a good example here. So let's try to see if we can get this better. So we'll go to effects. I'm sorry, bitmap, resample. And let's make this bigger. Let's say it's going to be. 10 inches tall. Maintain aspect ratio, 100 dots per inch. Okay, so I just made it a little bit bigger. Now we're going to trace bitmaps, outline, line art. I'll select, reselect, and that's much better. We want to actually, uh, you can see it selected automatically, it shows, hey, this white's the background, and it deleted it. But there's still more white, so we'll actually say instead of just deleting what it thinks the background, let's delete color from the entire image right here. So we have none, which removes nothing, and then background, so what the computer perceives to be the background. But you'll see that there's still white in this heart, and say in the bees and stuff like that. So you can say in the color from the entire image, so it removes all the white. But sometimes the computer might select the black or something and say it's the background color. So you can click specify and click this little eyedropper tool here and come in and select the color. So we want to remove all the black. So there we are, removed all the black. But in this example, we want to remove the white. So let's remove the white. Click OK. We now have a transparent. And you can see here I'm moving it. Uh, around you can see this now a vector image so we went from a, a, a JPEG to a vector image so we now have a vector of this I don't like how when we it scanned in since this was such a low quality JPEG you see all this yucky gray stuff that sucks so what I would like to do is go ahead and make this all the same color by going up here to the bucket fill and just select a different color and then let's make it black because I think her logo was originally black. This is how I do it if I was preparing it for a laser and if this is the only logo I had, uh, this is how I would do it. And then we'll go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap again, 100 dots per inch. Now we got a trace, outline trace, line art. We do the same thing. But by doing this, we just layered it. So now instead of all these pieces, we now have solid pieces. You see how if we move that, the laser will follow that cut. And we got rid of all those little pieces. 
and we now have a vector image that has a transparent background. Let's, let's move that to the back by pressing Control End. Move that to the back. So we have a 8.8 .8 circle. We want to get this color inside of this for an example for somebody. So we would take this guy, and this particular one has a circle around it. So um, what I would do if we didn't have the circle, actually here, we just do it this way. So we'll click, right click on group. I'm going to actually delete this. And now we're going to highlight this by drawing a square around it and click Control G. Or you can click right click, or you can click uh, highlight it, right click, and click group, or control G. They both group. And we're going to draw a circle. That's 8.8, .8 just because that's the size that this one was. And then we need to take this uh, wood here, and you can make it just a little bit bigger than the circle. This way and this way. This is just for if you want this overlay here. And so this square, click on it, right click, power clip inside, and then click the circle, and you'll get this. So let's step this again. So we got the square. You're going to right click on the square, click the power clip inside, and then you get a different type of pointer. And you'll take that and you'll point at whatever you want power clip inside. So this one we want power clip inside the circle. Boom. Power clip inside the circle. This is a pretty powerful tool because you can actually click this wood grain, right click, and now we're power clip inside this logo. And now I just put that wood grain inside this entire logo. So we'll click this and we'll go ahead and power clip to here. So I'm going to send this to the back. You can press you can write do this two ways. You can use control end, which sends it to the back of the page. So it sends it behind everything. Uh, control home sends it in front of everything. And then you have control page down, which just takes it back one step. And you can also right click and you can also right click and go to order. I don't do it this way that often, so where the heck is it? Maybe I lied here. All right, sorry, you need to click here, you need to go to, I gotta find it now, guys. It's an object, yeah, so you go click on it, go to object, order, to the front of the page, or you say, hey, I want this to be behind this logo. So say we want to put this, you know, and we'll send this to the back just for a better example here. So we have this logo here, and you can go to object, order, behind. So I'm taking this circle, which is what's already selected, and I say I want it to be behind these letters and then it pulls it behind it. All right, so now you can press Control A to select everything, or you can draw a square around everything, and then press your hotkeys of E and C. So E uh, makes it even this way, and C makes it even this way. And that's it. This is your, your mock-up. I would be ready to send a customer to say, hey, this is what we could do, this is what it would look like, and it's ready to go. Uh, and you can use the, I like to use the snipping tool, and then draw a snip around it, and then save this and send that to the customer. Uh, you could also uh, go up here and export this as a JPEG if you want a better quality image. Um, but that's it, that's removing and making something transparent inside Corel Draw from a JPEG and we touched base a little bit on power clipping. So thanks. This is Jay and this is my to-do list. Thanks for stopping.